Today on Ham Radio Q&A, we blow stuff up. <laughs> KB9VBR, your host for Ham Radio q and I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community, so if this is your first time watching, please consider hitting that subscribe button. And if it's your last time watching, well, we got something in store for you guys. <laughs> oh. So, a couple of months ago, we talked about multimeters and safety. Yes, we, we did. We had a good time with that. Yeah. It was about as boring as you could get. <laughs> well, I saved the best for last. <laughs> Today, we're going to show what happens when you violate every one of those safety factors and do something completely stupid. And trust me, it's fun. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to use a transformer found out of a common device that you may find in your house. I'm not going to say what it is. But it easily produces 2,000 volts of uh, AC voltage. And we're going to run that through the um, ubiquitous, what's the word I'm looking for maybe? Harbor Freight. Oh, yes. Uh, I shouldn't have said a that. True, <laughs> a true... Electrician's multimeter from Harbor Freight. <laughs> the best $7 multimeter you can buy anywhere. Or get for free. If you have a coupon. <laughs> but we're going to put 2,000 volts through one of these things in a situation that probably will never ever happen under normal circumstances. But just to prove a point. And to blow stuff up. So Let's see what happens. Alright. So to demonstrate the uh, voltage potential of this transformer I have what we have here is a high voltage probe. This is a thousand to one voltage uh, or a voltage split or a, a resist, a thousand to one resistance here. So, I what I see on this display is going to be, need to be multiplied by a thousand. I have the negative or the ground or the common to the base of the transformer. I have one hand in my pocket. I have my other hand here behind the shield, and I'm going to touch it to the prime or to the secondary lead here, and I should get about a two to two point one reading here once I do that. And there we go. So that's two volts on the display times a thousand. That's going to be two thousand volts coming off that transformer. Now, for you safety freaks, I understand the. Uh, fine Rubbermaid cover here is not rated for 2,000 volts, so we need to understand that. Um, we're going to make sure that this uh, secondary lead here does not come in contact with anything else. It's pretty short, so we shouldn't uh, have too many problems. Okay, so we have here the world's finest Harbor Freight $7 multimeter. I have put the test leads in the current position to present a low impedance uh, load to the transformer. Uh, when I plug the transformer in, it'll be 2,000 volts, low impedance, it should act as a short circuit. If the input protection on this is sufficient enough, it should just blow a fuse. If it's not sufficient enough, 2,000 volts, um, it should fail spectacularly. We'll just say that. Uh, Michael's gonna stand back, I'm gonna stand back, we're going to energize a transformer and see what happens. Remember kids, do not try this at home. Ever. I mean ever. No, don't do this. It's bad. You good? All right. Okay, three, two, one. That's the desired effect that I wanted. Hey! I'm plugging it. <laughs> I smell, I smell. I saw flames. <laughs> I definitely saw flames. Uh, for the record, the display is still showing something. Uh, yeah, there was definitely flames. I could smell the ozone, even out here. Um, I call that great success. <laughs> Kids, don't try this at home. <laughs> Uh, it is definitely showing something on the display still, uh, but you can see by the multiple decimal points and just the one there that uh, it took a direct hit. So I'm going to, uh, I, we're disconnected here. To make double sure I'm just going to disconnect it here as well. And we'll uh, 
kind of do a post mortem here. Oh yeah, I can smell it. It's bad. Ooh, smell a vision. Oh, ho, 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 ho. <laughs> definitely. So, if you remember my video from a couple weeks ago. Let me get situated here again. Yeah. So you remember my video from a couple weeks ago, the cat, cat rating on these uh, defines the level of safety in the event of a, um, of a voltage spike or a transient voltage. Uh, this is category two, which would be okay for working on electronics. This would not be something that you'd ever want to work on uh, 120 volts inside a house, such as an outlet. This is really basic here. Um, so 100 and, or category 2, probably at about 250 volts. Interesting enough here, um, it tells you uh, do not test voltages over 250 volts. We've definitely exceeded that, so I'm going to give a credit here. We have exceeded the manufacturer's uh, specs here. Okay, so i got the two screws loose here. We'll put them there. Do a little post-mortem. Oh. Uh, so as you can see there, um, that's that's destroyed. Let's set that down. Uh, you can definitely see the carbon trace here where everything arced. Uh, there is some arcing over here. I think the battery's still good. It, it was still powered. <laughs> um, I, I I wouldn't recommend reusing this battery. Uh, yeah, there's some arcing right there. That, of course, where the trace went. These, this two wires right here, these are all crispy. Um, you can see that. I mean, a lot of this is smoke damage, but the PCB is toast, definitely. But as you can see, there is, there is no fuse. There's nothing here to prevent an overcurrent situation. This is an overvoltage situation. Um, but there's no there's no in protect, input protection here whatsoever. I mean, you know, you basically have your your three jacks right here, and they go right they go to a separate daughter board, but they're just there's they're soldered on here, so there's very little safety on these things. Again, the the category rating in itself should tell you what this is good for, what it's not good for. And you no, know, we put it in a situation you would not expect this to be in normally. Um, but this goes to show how um, you know we say you trust your lives with these things. Do you really want to have this in your hand in case something like this happens? And this can happen. If you're working on old radios that have um, higher voltages off the secondary for tubes or in a uh, old TV that has, um, you know, 20, 25,000 volts going through the CRT, this is a, this is a serious situation. This could, um, this could have been worse. This battery could have exploded. Um, you know, if you're holding this, I'm sure that this plastic is not going to uh, protect you for very long. So it's um, always know what you're doing. Always double check before you take a voltage or current reading. And uh, try to protect yourself with a meter that is definitely of a better construction than this. Um, do your research. Um, and I think that you'll be all be satisfied. Don't get the, don't go getting one of these because they're free with twenty dollar purchase at Harbor Freight or anywhere else. Uh, with the Harbor Freight meter, we actually had the probes in the voltage position, and it was reading current. Uh, that was backwards from what I initially had said. So we've set up this Anag An eight zero eight zero zero eight. Uh, this has a little bit of a higher uh, rating, a thousand volts for Cat two, six hundred volts Cat three. Uh, there is some input protection on this meter as we've discussed before, but otherwise everything else is going to be the same. So I'm going to uh, energize the transformer here and we're going to see how this one holds up. Probably ain't. Just going to let you know. Ready? Okay, go. Okay, three, two, one. Oh, look at the black smoke on that one. Wow. Oh, release all that magic smoke. <laughs> Okay, 
Ooh, yeah, she's she's real crispy. Let's go ahead and disconnect this and get her from off the ground there, and let's uh let's take it apart. Oh, look at that! <laughs> we know we know where the damage was done. That turned to rubber. Let's take these off. Mm, it's still a little warm. Oh, oh, look at that! Oh, I think this one fared this one fared worse than the Harbor Freights. Oh, ooh, this one definitely stinks, guys, guys and gals. Oh yeah, these bad batteries. That's still wet. Oh, I guess when it popped, I think this battery, this battery was actually out of place. It's kind of. Oh, there she goes. Ooh. So. Oh, this one had some more. In, this is definitely separated a little bit more. There, you got your uh, your shunt there for your current measurements. There's the little itty bitty input fuse. I don't think that blue. Um, yeah, you can see where right up here. That's where the that's where the arcing happened, and that's where she started the smoke. There's another input fuse over here, but this was for voltage. Yeah, and we had it on the voltage, so the traces here look okay. Um, I'm just gonna. It seemed like most of the damage was on the front side, based on the temperature that the uh, selector switch got to, because it was soft enough that I could. It would deform easy when I put the screwdriver to it. So let's take the board off. Oh, yeah, this one definitely smells more rancid. It probably got some, uh, probably got some materials that are known to cause cancer in the state of California. Good thing we're not there. Right, this is Wisconsin. Okay, so there she goes. Obviously, we're not trying to save. Oh, wow. Ooh. Yeah, you can see. Take that all apart there. So the whole front of this PCB is just scorched. Heavy scorching here that went down past the upper layer of the um, PCB. Yeah, the, oh, wow. Yeah, it burnt right through the battery compartment. Yeah, that batteries, those batteries are probably compromised. If you can take a look here, obviously that melted the battery compartment too. Burnt through right there, so I mean you had a full burn through on that. Just look at that. Wow. Well that's forty dollars down the tube. <laughs> but it was for science. That's right. So yeah, don't ever try this at home, guys. We, I've been working on this plan for a month and where to stage it, where to set back, and um, how we're going to do this safely. So yeah, he it's, decided to stage it at my house instead of his. Well, <laughs> <laughs> let me be totally honest with you guys. Spring, uh, March in Wisconsin, if you have three dogs, <laughs> you don't want to go in your backyard for a couple of days. It's been, it's a it's a process. It's not it's not an event. It's a process of cleaning that up. Um, but as you can plainly see here, this is uh, not something that you want in your hands uh, if, if this type of event happens. Again, this is set up. Will this ever happen 99% of the time? No, you're not going to have a 2,000 volt transformer, you know, but, you know, if you're repairing old radios uh, or old television sets, uh, anything that can have um, tubes in it, this, there's a potential here. Um, so, again, I I just strongly recommend A, you know what you're doing, B, you take safety precautions, and B, or C, um, invest a little money in a decent meter uh, with some protection. Uh, that can be a, um, you know, not just, you know, talking about your own personal safety, but, you know, the safety of all the, your devices, your house, everything. Um, yeah, that's not good. 
All right, I hope you enjoyed that. So for more articles and information, be sure to check out my blog at www.jpol-antenna.com. Support of this channel drives the production of future videos. You can do a few things for us. Uh, support us on Patreon. Patrons receive uh, exclusive access to content and an ad-free experience to all new videos. And probably less disclaimers, too. Less disclaimers, yes. <laughs> so if you enjoyed this video, you can always give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification to be informed when a future video is released. But that's it for this time. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. And I'm Joe, KD9CJX. Have a great day and 73. 73. Boom! <laughs> <laughs>